Hello and welcome to this another exciting episode of Take the Fair Out of the Gear with me, Mr. Chumley Warner. And me, Jason Bangers. And yes, we're, we're diving deeper into the Behringer. Again, what's it about, dude? Well, who is Behringer and what is Behringer? Well, stay tuned and we'll tell you all about it. So, obviously, there was Behringer once upon a time. And there still is Behringer today. But who and what is Behringer? Because what a lot of people don't know is what is behind Behringer today. Um, the music tribe. What is it? Well, we're going to explain. Simon's going to wax lyrical for you today, aren't you, Mr Chumley? I certainly am. I'm going to explain how the Attack of the Clones come about. started. Yeah. 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 So, starting from the beginning. We're going to start with... Uli Beringer, the mastermind behind it all, born in 1961. He's older than us. But he looks slightly younger than he us. He looks a lot younger. Stem yes. cells. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're 56, okay, so uh, we're born in 68, roughly, so Yuri, Yuri must be... He's seven years older, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he's looking, but looking seven years younger. Looking stem cell fresh. Yes. <laughs> 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 and I, I didn't know this, he was born in Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I fought Poland, but don't know why. With a name like Yuri, Yuri Ergi, Ergi, Uli. Uli. Answers in the comments. So, Uli made his first synthesizer, his homemade one, in 1977 at the age of 16. And we've, we've got pictures. We're going to flash up all the way through the video, so we'll give you a picture of it. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, nice nice looking thing. Yeah, if, if, if Uli, if you've still got it, well, it would be great to have a... Send, send it to us for a review and we, we can review it for you and give you the I give you that, that thumbs that, up. If he's still got that, mate, that'd be his pride possession. Yes. Well, he can invite us over for a cup of coffee you, and, and a chat, you know. You could do that, Yuri, and I know we're not pronouncing your name right, but we're English, so forgive us. And uh, yeah, Beringer was founded in nineteen eighty nine in Germany. So that's that's how it all started. That was the year when it all started. Yeah. And like Jay said, to begin with, it was like the uh, the guitar pedals, the studio equipment. Yeah, it's like, like that a, tu a tuner, you know, which used a nine volt battery in one evening. Um, it tuned well, but it would cut through a battery in an evening. And then there was a compressor pedal and a, a fuzz pedal. It was really but, cheap yeah. and nasty stuff, but very, very affordable if you didn't have anything. Exactly. This is this is what made it appeal to musicians because it was all affordable. Yeah, and if you had a power supply for it, you didn't have to worry about a battery. No, so we're gonna we're gonna now gonna explain the the whole synthesizer thing. So apparently, Uli in he made like a Juno one hundred six, sort of an idea of a clone. It was called the Fat one hundred eight. I will show you a picture, and th this was like his sort of precursor to the his Deep Mind project. Yeah. So this was this was like his first ideas, and then then what Behringer did, they acquired this company called Cool Audio. And they were like a chip manufacturer. And I think they did that in uh, 2000. And they started remaking all the old chips, like the 3340 oscillator chip. Chips you couldn't get hold of. No, so that, that's, that was genius, really, that wasn't it? was very clever. And then uh, Behringer entered the synth market in the sort of mid-2010s with the deep mind. It's a hell of a synthesizer, that. We've looked into that. I mean, that is something else. So I think the idea about the Deep Mind it gave them all the research and development, all the ideas of how to market and build a, a synth, yeah. and being being an original synth as well, but also a synth that's uh, up to date with the modern technology use behind it. Yeah, it's all the iPads and whatnot. Yeah, and it, it, you can still buy one today. And Jay and I were looking at a video earlier, thinking, actually, <laughs> we, well, why well, haven't well, we got one? Yeah, why haven't we got a, one? Yeah. It's a sexy synth. It really is so, something else. Uli, yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna send us one, we'll, we'll delightfully review it for you. It's absolutely awesome. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Well, you never know. So the, the next question is obviously the Behringer Deep Mind sells well, but then Behringer had the idea of if. Do people want the old synth? Do people want the clones? Mm. And how can they go about this? So there's sort of three things that come into uh, into view, really. There's th something called abandonware, a bit like the old Wasp products. that They're not in production. Uh, they're not being made anymore. And as Jay mentioned earlier, the patents have long expired on yeah. a lot of this gear. Yeah. And the design rights have expired. So I guess Behringer looked at various old synthesizers and obviously now they're remanufacturing the chips. 
what can we make? So they decided to start with uh, the mono synths. See, now, you can't ever go at the guy for making clones. I mean, a lot of people said this is a complete rip-off. It, because it was a rip-off, it was meant to be because he bought the rights to the original because the original rights had expired. And when you've got a team of lawyers looking at patents all day long, and that's all they do, and they wait for them to expire and then quickly snap in and take them over... It's, that, it's yours, you own it. And uh, you, you could say, well, how how did they, obviously, apart from the Deep Mind project, how did they get all the expert engineers and people to produce these new items? Well, that kind of leads us on to the Behringer group of companies. So in, This it, is really what we want to tell you about, because so many people aren't aware. No, and in, uh, apparently in 2009, Behringer acquired Midas and Clark Technic. There you go. Uh, 2012, they acquired Turbo Sound. <laughs> Only the world's best speakers, in my opinion. Yeah, I do love Turbo Gear. T 2015, the TC Group. TC Electronics. And the wow. TC Helion group of products as well. And then after that, Aston Microphones, Bugera. Yeah. Jay's got a Bugera oh, bass I? rig. It's amazing. Uh, a company called Lab, Lab, Lab Group, and I think. And that includes a company called Lake, like processors and stuff. Uh, Tannoy. As yeah, well. Tannoy. And obviously Behringer themselves. That's, that's in included in all their products as well. So what you got is a whole heap of longevity there. People with knowledge. And I mean, even Behringer themselves have been around since 89. I mean, there's a, you know, that's a long time. These guys have been in business. And it's a, it's a large pool of engineers. Mm. You know, the Midas engineers, the Clark Technic engineers to... to Say well, guys, we we got an idea to make these clones, and ideal them just well, genius. So, really. so, is this the corporation that is known as the Music Tribe? They're now in 2017. They could, they were onwards. They were called the Music Tribe, and before that, they were called the Music Group. Yeah, yeah. And in 2018, they moved to China, so they built a. It's almost like a Behringer village. It's a factory, factory buildings and accommodation they built for up to 10,000 workers. <laughs> uh, and I think when they first opened, they had 3,000 employees. Goodness gracious, that's an awful lot. So you can see that, well, very cleverly, they've set up the whole thing, including the chip manufacturing, yeah. to produce the synths. And getting, the chip, getting the chips was genius because that's what you needed going forward with your cones, wasn't it? That was genius. That's it, and... Uh, Obviously, they started with the monosynth clones, and they well, they realised, well, hang on a minute, rather than investing all that money in, like, say, the deep mind, it's easier to produce the clones, and we and people love the clones, and they're making more money doing it. We like the clones. So obviously, the monosynths came, then they did the drum machines, RD8, RD9, uh, got the polysynths they're working on, plus the effects they're now doing, like the Neve stuff. And that's, that's how it all started. I mean, thanks to them, I can almost say to somebody out on the street, I've got an 808. But I kind of have, because it's a, it's a complete copy of an 808. And when someone says, I'd like that Neve sound, it may not be a problem. It may not be a problem because I've paid for one. <laughs> I've paid for one. Yeah, I've chucked in my £450 sterling and so, just paid for the damn thing and just fingers crossed now. Yeah, and if you want to know when, when it's all coming, we've done the, last week's videos and the weeks before. Tells you when everything hopefully is coming. So. And, and I've only bought it so we can show it to you. See, that's how much we love you guys. Because there's plenty of videos out there, but Simon and I think we might be able to bring it across better with layman's terms. That's all, because we are laymen. We, we, we are engineers. We've been sp most of our lives in studios, believe me. However, sometimes... Things are explained in such a way that you just can't understand what the hell they're talking about. They don't explain what what soft and hard knee is, for example. Just things like that. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna bring all that to you. We're gonna explain it simply. And there is the big Behringer clone debate. That is the history behind it. So we hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Just we always wanted to do this, and we thought we'd get around to doing it. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell all your friends. Share it all around. And stick around for the next video, which is going to be about what, Simon? We've got another little Behringer one, but we are going to go back to uh, reviewing all the gear we've got lying around. So don't don't think we're, we're turning into Behringer clones. Love you guys. This is Take the Fair Out of Gear. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.